In the step-by-step -step, or row-by-row -row example I gave, I um, started with uh, 22 stitches. I started with five stitches that were um, the, the, the front raglan, the center, shoulder, and, or the, the shoulder, and the back raglan. Those are the five stitches for that. And then um, 12 stitches across the back and another five stitches that are the left-hand version of the front raglan, shoulder center, back raglan. So here's how I calculated how to do the sh how many short row turns to do and how many of them to do. If I take my 12 stitches here and I divide it by um, I divide it by six, I've got two stitches each side of the that this is one sixth of my my setup. Now you could just as easily divide it by three, mark the, th the, the center third, which is going to be four stitches, that, and put a marker in the middle because that's your, your um, marker you're going to count off of for every turn. So I've got four stitches here, four stitches here. I've got my center marker set. Here's the calculation. Um, this two is is when I did the original calculation in the post I wrote. I said this is T. That's your center stitches divided by um, six. So that's T. This two is T. And then you have to calculate F. I want to do four short row turns. So I want four sets of short rows. So when I when I knit and I I do my first increase here because this is right side row, I'm going to do my first increase there for the for the back raglan. I'm going to turn on that stitch right there. Then I'm going to knit back to the side turn, I'm going to go all the way back across to this end doing doing my increases as I go. I'm going to turn and I'm going to come to this marker and I'm going to turn back. That's my first set of short row turns. Then I'm going to knit back here. I'm going to go all the way across to the other side I'm going to turn and I'm going to make my next short row turn one stitch over. And you see I did the first one here and the second one's here. I'm going to turn to the go to the end. I'm going to go all the way across doing my increases as I go. I'm going to come back. This was my first turn on the left side. This is my next turn on the le on the left side. I'm going to turn and this is just a repeat every single time. The only thing you are doing is you are moving one stitch toward the center. Okay, so say you have um, a garment that's got 30 back neck stitches. So we're still starting with our same five for the for the the um, shoulder, front raglan, back raglan. We still have that, but when now we have, you know, 25 stitches here. We're still going to divide this in three. So 25 divided by 3 is 7. It's going to be 8 on each side and 7 in the middle. Yeah, 9 on each side, 8 in the middle. Whatever it is, you're going to still calculate. Say you want, um, you want 4 short rows. 
We're still going to say that's our that's our goal. We want four short roll sets. So we have um, this is 25. So we have a stitch in the center, and we've got 12. stitches on each side. So there's our center stitch. We have 12 on each side, but we are doing four short row turns and we don't want a neck that looks like that. We want a neck or, or a neckline that looks like that. That would be ugly. So what we need to do is we need to take this four short row turns and we need to, to divide them evenly into our um, however many stitches our eight stitches here. So here we go. We are going to say we have eight stitches so we know we are going to turn every our, each of our turns is going to move two stitches toward the center so that when we get done we have a neckline that looks like this and without all our turns bunched in one spot or another. We want to divide those short row turns so that we get a nice curved neck. I hope that makes sense.